Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Thursday, September 16th, 2021. Thank you so much for spending this time in God's word with me today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. Today we remember Cyprian of Carthage. Cyprian, who lived from AD 200 until AD 258, was acclaimed bishop of the North African city of Carthage around AD 248. During the persecution of Roman Emperor Decius, Cyprian fled Carthage, but returned two years later. He was then forced to deal with the problem of Christians who had lapsed from their faith under persecution and now wanted to return to the church. It was decided that these lapsed Christians could be restored but that their restoration could take place only after a period of penance that demonstrated their faithfulness. During the persecution under Emperor Valerian, Cyprian at first went into hiding, but later gave himself up to the authorities. He was beheaded for the faith in Carthage in AD 258. Our Psalm for today is the first portion of Psalm 108. My heart is confident, God, I will sing. I will sing praises with the whole of my being. Wake up, harp and lyre. I will wake up the dawn. I will praise you, Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praises to you among the nations. For your faithful love is higher than the heavens, and your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. God, be exalted above the heavens, and let your glory be over the whole earth. Save with your right hand and answer me, so that those you love may be rescued. As part of his renewal of worship of the Lord, King Josiah led the people of Judah in a grand celebration of the Passover. Josiah observed the Lord's Passover and slaughtered the Passover lambs on the 14th day of the first month. He appointed the priests to their responsibilities and encouraged them to serve in the Lord's temple. He said to the Levites who taught all Israel the holy things of the Lord, Put the holy ark in the temple built by Solomon, son of David, king of Israel. Since you do not have to carry it on your shoulders, now serve the Lord your God and his people Israel. Organize your ancestral families by your divisions according to the written instructions of King David of Israel and that of his son Solomon. Serve in the holy place by the groupings of the ancestral families for your brothers, the lay people, and according to the divisions of the Levites by family. Slaughter the Passover lambs, consecrate yourselves, and make preparations for your brothers to carry out the word of the Lord through Moses. Then Josiah donated 30,000 sheep, lambs, and young goats, plus 3,000 cattle from his own possessions, for the Passover sacrifices for all the lay people who were present. His officials also donated willingly for the people, the priests, and the Levites. Hilkiah, Zechariah, And Jehiel, chief chief officials of God's temple, gave 2,600 Passover sacrifices and 300 cattle for the priests. Konaniah and his brothers Shemaiah and Nethanel, and Hashabiah, Jael, and Jozebad, officers of the Levites, donated 5,000 Passover sacrifices for the Levites, plus 500 cattle. So the service was established. The priests stood at their posts and the Levites in their divisions, according to the king's command. Then they slaughtered the Passover lambs, and while the Levites were skinning the animals, the priests splattered the blood they had been given. They removed the burnt offerings so that they might be given to the groupings of the ancestral families of the lay people to offer to the Lord, according to what is written in the book of Moses. They did the same with the cattle. They roasted the Passover lambs with fire, according to the regulation. They boiled the holy sacrifices in pots, kettles, and bowls, and they quickly brought them to the lay people. Afterward, they made preparations for themselves and for the priests, since the priests, the descendants of Aaron, were busy offering up burnt offerings and fat until night. So the Levites made preparations for themselves and for the priests, the descendants of Aaron. The singers, the descendants of Asaph, were at their stations according to the command of David, Asaph, Heman, and Jejuthun, the king's seer. Also the gatekeepers were at each temple gate. 
none of them left their tasks because their Levite brothers had made preparations for them. So all the service of the Lord was established that day for observing the Passover and for offering burnt offerings on the altar of the Lord, according to the command of King Josiah. The Israelites who were present in Judah also observed the Passover at that time and the festival of unleavened bread for seven days. No Passover had been observed like it in Israel since the days of the prophet Samuel. None of the kings of Israel ever observed a Passover like the one that Josiah observed with his priests, the Levites, all Judah, the Israelites who were present in Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. In the 18th year of Josiah's reign, this Passover was observed. After all this that Josiah had prepared for the temple, King Necho of Egypt marched up to fight at Carchemish by the Euphrates, and Josiah went out to confront him. But Necho sent messengers to him saying, what is the issue between you and me, King of Judah? I have not come against you today, but I am fighting another dynasty. God told me to hurry, so stop opposing God who is with me. Don't make him destroy you. But Josiah did not turn away from him. Instead, in order to fight with him, he disguised himself. He did not listen to Nico's words from the mouth of God, but went to the valley of Megiddo to fight. The archers shot King Josiah, and he said to his servants, Take me away, for I am severely wounded. So his servants took him out of the war chariot, carried him in his second chariot, and brought him to Jerusalem. Then he died, and they buried him in the tomb of his ancestors. All Judah and Jerusalem mourned for Josiah. Jeremiah chanted a dirge over Josiah, and all the male and female singers still speak of Josiah in their dir dirges today. They established them as a statute for Israel, and indeed, they are written in the dirges. The rest of the events of Josiah's reign, along with his deeds of faithful love, according to what is written in the law of the Lord, and his words from beginning to end, are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. As we continue reading in Paul's letter to the Christians in Colossae, we hear his encouragement to live as the new people that God has made us through faith in Christ. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death what belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, God's wrath is coming upon the disobedient. And you once walked in these things when you were living in them. But now, put away all the following, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and filthy language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self. You are being renewed in knowledge according to the image of your creator. In Christ, there is not Greek and Jew, circumcision and uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free. The Christ is all and in all. Therefore, as God's chosen ones, holy and dearly loved, put on compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another if anyone has a grievance against another. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you are also to forgive. Above all, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. And let the peace of Christ, to which you were also called in one body, rule your hearts. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell richly among you in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another through psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and don't be bitter toward them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not exasperate your children so that they won't become discouraged. Slaves, obey your human masters in everything. Don't work only while being watched as people pleasers, but work wholeheartedly 
fearing the Lord. Whatever you do, do it from the heart as something done for the Lord and not for people, knowing that you will receive the reward of an inheritance from the Lord. You serve the Lord Christ. For the wrongdoer will be paid back for whatever wrong he has done, and there is no favoritism. Our writing for today comes from the man whom we are remembering, that is Cyprian of Carthage. Vices and carnal sins must be trampled down, beloved brothers, and the corrupting plague of the earthly body must be trodden underfoot with spiritual vigor, lest, while we are turned back again to the conversation of the old man, we become entangled in deadly snares, even as the apostle, with foresight and wholesomeness, forewarned us and said, so then, brothers, we are debtors, not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. If we are the sons of God, if we are already beginning to be his temples, if, having received the Holy Spirit, we are living holy and spiritually, if we have raised our eyes from earth to heaven, if we have lifted our hearts filled with God and Christ to things above and divine, let us do nothing but what is worthy of God and Christ, even as the apostle arouses and exhorts us, saying, If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth, for you have died. And your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Let us then, who in baptism have both died and been buried in respect to the carnal sins of the old man, who have risen again with Christ in the heavenly regeneration, both think upon and do the things that are Christ's. Our hymn for today is a stanza from the hymn, Renew Me, O Eternal Light. Remove the power of sin from me and cleanse all my impurity, that I may have the strength and will, temptations of the flesh to still. And we pray. Almighty God, you gave your servant Cyprian boldness to confess the name of our Savior Jesus Christ before the rulers of this world and courage to die for the faith he proclaimed. Give us strength always to be ready to give a reason for the hope that is in us and to suffer gladly for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time in God's word with me today. May the Lord richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.